All right, everyone, this is going to be the training video for the third grade workshop. For this workshop, you will need a few items. You will need the print of Little Red Riding Hood. You will also need at least one uh, Norman Rockwell, not uh, optional to have the second one. You'll also need your CD player and uh, your third grade workshop CD. Uh, this is, um, again, a 15-minute workshop, and, uh, yeah, I will be using Invisible Children again, so just kind of bear with me as I explain kind of where the kids are and what they're supposed to be doing. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. My name is Lisa. I'm going to write that on the board, just in case you need to grab my attention. And I am an actor with the Merry Go Round Playhouse. How many of you have seen a Merry Go Round play before? A few of you? Great. Well, usually when someone from Merry Go Round comes into your classroom, we're here to talk to you about a play that you're going to see, and then you go and you see the play. But today, you are actually not going to see a play. You are going to be doing a workshop with me here in your classroom, which means for the next 50 minutes, I'm going to be right here in your room, and we're going to be talking about storytelling. I mean, storytelling has been around for years and years and years, ever since cavemen sat around fires and bonked dinosaurs on the head. Well, that probably didn't happen, but you get what I'm saying. Stories have been around for a long, long time. But before I get into the workshop, I want to make sure that everybody is clear on my rules, but they're very simple. I only have three, okay? The first rule is, if you have something you'd like to say, go ahead and raise your hand. That way I can hear everybody and everybody's thoughts and ideas. Second is respect. I want us all to feel comfortable in here, sharing ideas and coming and participating. And I want to make sure that everybody is re respecting each other here in the room. And finally, I know I'm not your normal wonderful teacher. So we're doing something a little bit different here today. But I still need to follow, follow all of your normal classroom rules. So if you can follow my three rules for me, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And we can move on. Great. Thumbs up for everyone. Fantastic. So as I said, as I said I'm going to talk about storytelling and actually different careers in storytelling, okay? Now, if you had a really great story, a really awesome story, what is one way that you could share that story with a friend? Go ahead and raise your hand for me. Oops. Awesome. Go ahead and share, share your ideas with me. Yes, what's one way? Great, you could tell. Who else? Yeah? Read. Very good. How else? Act. Yes, one of my favorite ways. And the other way, oh, you could dance a story. Mm -hmm. And when you're dancing, you're usually dancing to what? Yes, music. And then how else? You could write a story. Mm -hmm. Any other way? I'm thinking if you're reading a story in a book, there are usually what else in those books that help tell the story? Pictures. Very good. And that's actually what we're going to start our workshop with, is pictures. Have you ever heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words? Raise your hand if you've heard that before. A couple of you. Does anybody think they can explain what that means? A picture is worth a thousand words? Yes. Very good. It means that one person might look at a story and see something and tell a whole story from it, but somebody might look at the exact same picture and tell a completely different story, right? You can see many different things in the same picture, okay? And so I am going to draw a picture up on the board. And you all happen to be very lucky because I am a magnificent whiteboard artiste, and I'm going to draw one of my masterpieces things for you. And so after I draw my masterpiece piece on the board, I'd like you to raise your hand if you could tell me what is happening in my masterpiece. Okay? But I want everyone to see my piece at the same time. So everyone close your eyes, cover them with your hands so I know no one's cheating. Very good, no peeking. I want everyone to see them all at the same time. Okay, and I will begin my piece. Oh, yes, this is going to be the finest masterpiece I have ever drawn in my entire life. Oh, yes, this is wonderful. Oh, do not peek, I will know if you are peeking. Okay. And open your eyes. Ta-da! Oh, thank you, thank you. Open your applause. Oh, yes, I know it's wonderful. Okay. So, who can raise your hand and tell me what they think is happening in my picture? Yeah. What do you think? 
Two people are playing with a balloon, and the balloon went off the string. Good idea. What's another idea? Yes. Oh, two people are having a party. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe they're sharing, maybe it's a balloon again. Any other ideas? Oh, you think that's a snake, and up there is the sun. Two people, okay. Very good ideas. Now I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking at my picture, and I'm hearing all of your ideas, and they're all very different. And so I'm thinking that maybe I left out a lot of things out of this picture that could make it clearer. Can anyone think of the one word, or the one word to describe all of the things that I left out of this picture that could make it clearer so that everybody knew what was going on? Yes, details, and details are going to be so important throughout this whole workshop that I'm going to write it up on the board. Details. Great. So let's add some details into this picture altogether. Okay? Let's start with this person here. Now I know you can't really tell, um, or we don't know yet, but can someone raise their hand to tell me, should this person be a boy or a girl? It should be a girl. And can you give me the name of a girl? Um, I don't want the name of any girl that's in this class. Leah. Okay, that's a great name. Is there any Leah's in the class? No? Great. So Leah is going to have a beautiful dress on. Leah's going to have a high ponytail here. Give Leah some ears and hands. Give her a little bag here. Give her some eyes. Nose. The mouth. And here is Leah. Great. Now how about this figure here? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Or what's his name? Joe. Okay, Joe. Joe's going to have a cool shirt on here. Joe's going to have a backpack, like so. Joe's going to have a mohawk, ears, hands. Give him some eyeballs. Okay, and there's Joe. Great, Leah and Joe. Now what about this uh, squiggly line here? What could that be? Yes. A river. Great, I like it. And the river gets smaller back there. Got a river here. And we've got this big old rock in the middle here. Another little rock here. And we have some grass along the side. Grass, grass, grass. Grass, that's really nice green. We add some color to the picture. Oh, yeah. Not really color wise. That. And then I got a brown here. We take a tree here. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. So there's some more details. Very good. Now, what is this circle thing up here? What do you think? Yes. Oh, it's the sun. Okay. Sun high up in the sky. It's the sun. Cool. Okay, so now we have some more details. But you know what? We don't really have the story yet. So to figure out the story, we're actually going to use five W's and the H of writing. Do you think they can tell me what the five W's and the H of writing are? The question words. Yes. Who? Uh, good. Where? When? What? Why? How? Very good. So now we need to fill out all of these questions to get our story. So some of them we kind of already know. Let's start with our who. Who's our who? Can someone raise your hand and tell me? Yes. Joe and Leah. So all right. J and L. Good. Now where could they be? I added a few details, but can anyone think of more specifically where they might be? They're in the forest, okay? So if they're in the forest, they need some more trees, right? There's a lot of trees. And then there's a pine tree over here. Pine tree here. Maybe there's another tree over here. And another tree down here. Here's a tree here. Okay. So they are, oops, let me put this on the They are the forest. I added one from the on that. 
There we go. And when could they be in the forest? When could they be? Yes. In the afternoon. Okay? In the afternoon. All right. So we have the beginning of our story. We have who? We have Joe and Leah. Where? They're in the forest. When? In the afternoon. So it's a pretty good beginning. We have the setting. Okay? But every good story has three parts. A beginning, a blank, and a blank. What are those left two blanks? Can you want to help me out? Middle and end. Very good. Middle and end. Now our middle is going to start with the what. And another way to think of the what is to call it an objective. Do you think they can tell me what an objective is? It's something you're trying to do, right? It's your goal. Okay? An objective is a goal. So I'm going to tell you a very quick story in which a character has a goal. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a girl named Lisa. Hi. Now, Lisa wanted to go outside of the door, so she said, I'm going to go outside of the door. So she turned, and she walked, and she went outside of the door. Okay? So it's a very simple story. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end, but it also had an obvious objective. What was Lisa's objective? Yes. She wanted to go outside of the door. Very good. So let's go ahead and give our characters up here some objectives. What is Leah's objective? What does she want? What's her goal? She wants to cross the river. Very good. And what does Joe want? What does Joe want? Yes, he wants to play with Leah. Okay, great. So now we have some objectives. Okay, now do you remember my story about Lisa wanting to go outside of the door? Yeah? wasn't very exciting, was it? No, because it was missing part of the middle. The part of the middle that makes the story exciting, which is the why. Okay? Another way to think of the why is to call it an obstacle. What do you think they can tell me what an obstacle is? Um, or where you've heard it? Yes. On an obstacle course. Very good. So on an obstacle course, is it easy to get from the beginning to the end? No. Right? Why not? Because there's tires and there's ropes. Yeah, and the tires and the ropes, they're all in your what? In your way, right? Yeah, so an obstacle is something that is in your way, that's keeping you from getting your objective, getting what you want. So I'm going to go back to the story of Lisa wanted to go outside of the door. And um, I'm going to need some, little, some help here to create an obstacle. Uh, what's your name? Joanna. Joanna, would you help me out for a moment? Thank you so much. Big Joanna, round of applause. Joanna, can you take your chair? and place it right in front of that door and take a seat. Very good. Now I'm going to back, go back and tell the story of Lisa and Wine go outside of the door one more time. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there's a girl named Lisa. Hi. Now Lisa wanted to go outside of the door, so she said, I'm going to go outside of the door. So she turned, and she walked, and she, <gasps> ah! Ah! Whoa! Where did this person come from? This person did my way! Ah! Okay. Now the story's a little bit more exciting because I have an obstacle to in the door, so I can't exit. So let's make our story up here a little bit more exciting, okay? Using the details that are already in this picture, that we already have, what is Leah's obstacle for getting what she wants, which is crossing the river? Yes. There isn't a bridge. No bridge. And so what's Joe's obstacle? It's like she's on the other side of the water, right? And there isn't a bridge, so his obstacle kind of no bridge too. Because if she could get to the other side, then it wouldn't be a problem, right? Very good. Okay, so now we've got the middle. We've got the, the meat of the story. Leah wants to cross the river, and <clears throat> Joe wants to play with Leah, but she can't play with him, and she can't cross the river because there's no bridge, okay? So now it's time to end the story. With the how. First, let's end my story of Lisa wanting to go outside the door. How could she get across, or I'm sorry, get through the door, even though Joanne is there now? A couple rules for ending the story of Lisa going outside the door, and also ending my story up here. Two, two little rules. Okay, the first rule is all the characters have to get what they want, and second, there could be nobody getting hurt. No one could get hurt. Okay? So, how could Lisa achieve her goal of wanting to get outside of the door? Oh, she could ask Joanna to play the move. Very good. How else? She could bribe her with money. 
Any other ideas? Oh, she could dig a tunnel underneath and, and bury her way out. Very good. Thank you, Joanna, for being my helper. Let's give her another round of applause. Maybe you can take your chair and go back. Very good. Okay, so let's end our story up here. How is Leah going to get across this river to play with Joe, even though there isn't a bridge? Are there any details in the story that might be able to help? Yeah. Oh, there are those big rocks, aren't there? Those big old rocks. I love it. So that she can step across on the rocks and get to Joe's home right rocks. Very good. So, she is going to use the rocks. Now, as I said, I'm an actor, right? So, one of my favorite ways to tell a story is through acting. So I am actually going to tell you the one woman version play of Leah and Joe in the forest. Okay? Are you ready? Let's hope this goes well. Okay? <clears throat> crunch, crunch, crunch. Man, I love leaves. I love being in the forest. Oh, hey, Leah. Oh, hey, Joe. How is it going? Oh, you know, it's going pretty good. I just love the forest. Do you want to hang out with me over here? Maybe we can catch some uh, bugs or maybe a bunny rabbit. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, man, look at this huge river. How am I ever going to get across? Oh, that's a good point, man. Uh, whoa, whoa, there's some really big rocks. Use those to cross. Oh, Joe, you are so smart. And that that's awesome! Woohoo! Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah! And that's the end of my clip. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay? Yeah! So, you all just created a really awesome story and some really great details. Now, <clears throat> as an actor, when I tell the story, I use my body and my voice to tell the story. Right? Um, and now, sometimes an actor's body can actually tell the story more than their voice can. For example, if uh, I stood on stage like this and I said, I am really excited, would you believe me? No, why not? Why won't you believe me? Right, because I, my body was showing you that I was grumpy and unhappy, right? So... I want to see how well you all can tell a story just using your bodies. Okay? So in the count of three, I'd like you all to quickly and quietly stand up right where you are. One, two, three. Very good. Thank you so much. So we are going to create some statues that tell a story. Okay? So a statue is a frozen pose, and you're not going to be using your voices at all. So what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a situation such as you just found a hundred dollar bill in the street, and then I'll count to three, and after I count to three, you're going to freeze in a pose that shows me how you would feel if that happened, okay? So, everybody ready? Shake it up, shake it up. Okay, there we go. Your first story is, you woke up in the morning and found out that there was no school today. One, two, three, freeze. Very good. But then you went downstairs and found out that you had to eat liver and onions for breakfast, right? One, two, three. But then your mother told you that you get to go on a vacation to Disney World. Ready? One, two, three, three. But then you look out the window and you see a UFO flying in the sky. Ready? One, two, three, three. And you don't know what you're going to do, and you think that they're going to attack you, so you run and you hide under your bed. Ready? One, two, three. But then you realize that you wake up, and it had all just been a dream. Show me the look on your face when you find out it's just a dream. Ready? One, two, three. Very good. Give yourself a round of applause. Very good. Nicely done. Really great statues. Really great statues. Okay. So... We're going to tell some more stories just using our bodies, and we're going to create what are called tableaus, okay? Now, tableaus are used in theater to tell a story by having a bunch of people grouped together in a pose, 
to tell a story. Okay? And so we're going to start off by creating some tableaus of a story that you already know. Okay? So I'm going to show you a picture of a painting of a story that you probably already know. And if you think you know what the story is, go ahead and raise your hand. Wow. All right, everybody has their hands up. What story is this? Little Red Riding Hood. Very good. Yes, Little Red Riding Hood. So, by looking at this picture, looking at the details in this picture, do we think that this is the beginning, the middle, or the end of the story of Little Red Riding Hood? The middle, what makes you think it's the middle? Because she's met the wolf, right? Very good. Very, very good. And it, she's heading to little or to her grandmother's house because she's got the basket of goodies. Right, so we need to, to have a complete story, we need to have the beginning and the end of this story. So we're going to create tableaus to do that. So who can raise their hand and tell me a character that's at the beginning of Little Red Riding Hood? Who's in the beginning? Yeah, Little Red Riding Hood. Right, will you come up and be Little Red Riding Hood for me? Great, so you can just come and stand here for a moment. Great, and who's the other character at the beginning? That's the mother telling her to go and take her basket of goodies to her grandmother. Will you come up and be the mother? Wonderful. So you're going to stand right here. So, mother, will you give me your best take these goodies to grandmother pose? Very good. And little red, will you give me your best okay mom pose? Lovely. Very good. So there's the beginning. You, you two can relax for a moment, but remember those poses, okay? We've got the beginning, we've got the middle, and now we need to make a tableau of the end. Now, there's lots of different versions of the end of the story, but in today's version, we're just going to say that the wolf gets scared away. Okay, so I've already given you one of the characters at the end, right? The wolf. Who would like to come up and be the wolf? Yes, come on up. So just hang out here for a moment. And who are the other characters at the end? We've got the wolf. Who else? The woodsman or the woodcutter. Yeah, come on up. And who are the other two? Granny and the last one? Little Red. Very good. So, Wolf, I'll have you come right over here. Can you give me your best running away scary pose? Good. And uh, Woodsman, can you give me your best scary boy the wolf pose? Very good. And Granny Little Red, give me your best I'm so relieved that the wolf is gone pose. <sighs> Very good. So, hold that. So, there is a tableau at the end of the story. Okay, so you can relax. So, we're going to put the story all together, okay? The beginning tableau, the middle picture, and the end tableau on the count three. Everyone help me count. Ready? One, two, three. All right. Very good. Give them a round of applause. Very good. You all can take a seat. You all can take a seat. Very good. We did such a nice job with that. Today I'd like to tell another story using tableaus. So this time, we're going to create a story together. This is what we're going to make up. Okay? So we're still going to use a painting to help us create this story. So take a look at this picture and look at the details. Okay. The detail there. Right? We're going to create the story. So who can raise their hand? Who we think this character is? What do you think his job is? A police officer, very good. You saw the details. He's got his gun holster here. He's wearing the uniform. But what about... This little boy, what does it look like if going on with this little boy looking at the details? Uh, yes. Oh, he looks like he's running away. Very good, because he saw this bag down here. Mm-hmm. And what about this person? What does it look like his job maybe? Maybe he works at the deli or at the restaurant because you see that they're sitting on restaurant stools and they're sitting at a counter. Very good. So we know this little boy ran away. We know that this is a police officer. So what do we think? Do we think this is the beginning the middle, or the end of the story? You say the middle. Okay, great. So we need to create the beginning and the end of the story. So why do we think this little boy ran away? What do we think could have happened at the beginning of the story that made him run away? Oh, he didn't want to eat his vegetables. And his dad said, you got to eat your vegetables. And he said, no way, I'm out of here. I love it. Very good. So will you come up and be the little boy? And who would like to come up and be the dad? Very good. Come on up. You both hang out here for a minute. Um, actually, first we'll get you into your poses. So, little boy, can you give me your best yuck, I don't like vegetables pose? Nice. And, Dad, give me your best you better eat your vegetables pose. Very nicely done. Okay, you can relax for now. Beginning, middle, now the end. So, how do you think this story ends? 
Do we think it has a happy ending or a sad ending? I think it has a happy ending. Very good. So what would happen at the end? The police officer would tell him to go home, and he goes back to his family. So let's get the um, the police officer to come on up. Who'd like to be the police officer? Great. So you're going to be the police officer here, and you say, you better go home. And the little boy's saying, who'd like to be the little boy? Very good. You come on up. Oh, boy, give me your best. Okay, I'll go home, Paul. Very good. So there's the end. So, everyone relax, and we'll put this story together again in the count of three. So tap those. You ready? You ready? One, two, three. Very good. Another story. Give them a round of applause. Nicely, nicely done. You can go ahead and take a seat. Very good. Now, we've told a lot of stories today, okay? We have told stories, let's see, through pictures. We have sort of written out some stories. We have uh, acted out some stories. And so now, I would like to tell some stories through music. Because just like in paintings or in drawings or in acting, if you listen and look for the details in the music, it will help you tell a story. Okay? So, this is what I would like you to do. I'd like you to pretend that you are a big shot Hollywood movie director. And I am bringing to you the soundtrack to your newest movie. Can you go tell me what a soundtrack is? Yes. That is the music that happens in a movie that helps tell the story, right? So when I ask you to, I would like you to close your eyes and listen to the details of the music. And then, once they ask you to open your eyes, I'd like you to raise your hand and tell me what your movie was about. Okay, so when you're thinking about your movie, first think about what kind of movie is it. Is it an action movie? Is it a horror movie? Is it a romance? Is it a sci-fi movie with robots? Okay, what kind of movie is it? And then start thinking about the beginning, the middle, and the end. Who are the characters? Where are they? When are they? There, what, what are their objectives, right? Start thinking about all of those things. And you might not get through all of it, which is okay, but really listen to the details to try to get a great movie or a great story, okay? So, someone raise your hand and tell me their favorite number between 1 and 11. 4, okay. So, everyone go ahead and close your eyes. And listen to the details of the music. Okay, who can raise their hand and tell me what kind of movie they created? Yes, what kind of movie was it? It was an action movie. What was your movie about? Football. And did you think about characters? Sure, I thought about lots of them. There's a main guy, another guy, they did a lot of things. Awesome, great movie, okay. Who would like to tell me their movie? Okay, so you kind of go through the movies and get what their responses are. And then you go through as many more songs as you have time for, okay? Um, and I like to give them the option of choosing the number, but you can also choose it for them. Okay. Very good. You all told some great stories just by listening to music. Now, it's really hard for me when I'm listening, oh, when I'm listening to music to not dance. Because dancing is one of my favorite things to do. And did you know that dance can tell a story? Have you ever heard of the Nutcracker? Yeah, the Nutcracker is a very famous ballet. And that's a story told entirely through dance and through music. Okay? So I have time to create a dance of a story. Okay? So I need someone to raise their hand and tell me their story uh, of their morning. From the time they woke up to the time they got on the bus or their parents or mom or dad or somebody brought them to school. Do they have a story in the morning? Yes. Okay, you woke up and you, you brushed your teeth. Okay, you brushed teeth. And then you did what? You ate Cheerios. And then what did you do? You walked to school. Okay, walked to school. Great. So we need to create a dance move for each one of these items for your morning, okay? So I'll come up with the first dance move, which is brushing teeth. 
So for my dance move, it's going to look like this. Okay, so let's have everybody try that. I'm counting everybody stand up. One, two, three. Very good. Okay, so everybody show me the dance move of brushing your teeth. Very good. Okay, so now we need to come up with a dance move for Cheerios. Who thinks they could come up with a dance move for eating Cheerios? Yes. What's your dance move? Oh, that's great. Why don't you come on up in front of the class and show everybody your Cheerios move? Looks like this. Ever practice? Very good. And so finally, we need a move for walk to school. Who thinks they could come up with a move for walking to school? Yeah, show me your dance move. Oh, that's brilliant. Come on up here and show everybody your move for walking to school. That's great. Awesome. Okay, so now we've got to put all three of these together to music. So you'll listen for me. I'll be conducting you, okay? So I'll say, brush your teeth. Cheerios. And then you do Cheerios. And then I'll say, walk to school. Hey, but you guys are listening because I might do it in different orders. Whoa. Okay? Let me find some good music for this. All right. I think this is the one I want. Oh, yeah. This is it. All right. Everybody ready? Here we go. And brush your teeth. Now eat your Cheerios. Now walk to school. Very good. Let's do it again. Brush your teeth. Now eat your Cheerios. And walk to school. Eat Cheerios. Walk to school. Brush your teeth. Cheerios. Now walk to school. Very good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Nicely done. Can you take a seat? Wonderful, everyone. Now I just want to remind you, if you really liked some of the way that we shared stories today, whether it's through acting or drawing or painting or dance, that you can actually have a job in storytelling. You can make that your job every day. I'm an actor. And I tell stories every single day, and I love it. Um, can anyone think of another job in storytelling? Another job? Yes. An illustrator, very good. Yes. A singer, wonderful. Dancer, great. Any others? A teacher, very good. These are all careers that you can have in storytelling. So if you really loved what we did today, keep that in mind as you start thinking about what your dream job might be when you get older. I had a wonderful time in here today. Does anyone have any questions for me before I go? Great. Thank you so much, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.